Hey, welcome back to another web development video. Uh, today, I wanna to talk about software engineering best practices. But before I do, make sure you subscribe down below. And if you have any comments or questions or anything, go ahead and also uh, leave those in the comments uh, down there. So uh, I'll just jump into it here. What are some software engineering best practices? This is kind of from a CS50, CS101, low, uh, uh, low level or I guess really high level, but you know, low uh, concept here. So it's not, I don't want to make things like complicated. This is an intro video, right? So a brief list and I'll kind of talk about them. So first up, you want to develop iteratively. So you want to break your development plan into smaller pieces. The basic idea is to follow a pattern of repeated cycles, you know, allowing um, so the engineers to take advantage of what was learned from a previous cycle. So, you know, building and then building on top of and then building on top of and being able to take, okay, well, we we have this thing here and we need to make some adjustments to it and fix some things and we'll make it a little bit better. Um, so developing iteratively. So that cycle is gonna include basically development, implementation and testing from, uh, from a real simple uh, way of explaining it. So right, you develop, you implement it and then you test it. And then you can, from there, you can see what you learned and then go ahead and develop again. So this also ensures that teams can make these changes easily uh, and often. So you don't just get stuck going down some crazy path and wasting three or four months worth of work because for whatever reason, something doesn't work. Um, and then also remember, you know, learning comes from this development and use from the software. So if it's iterative, you can learn from what you just created. And then also inside of developing iteratively, you have you know, essentially three components, right? Initialization, iterization, and the project control list. So I'll move on to the next concept, managing requirements. So managing requirements, um, you wanna think about documenting, um, analyzing, prioritizing the agreement uh, of requirements, and then essentially controlling the communication change. So you need to have everything written down here. It's kind of PM work uh, type stuff. So making sure that there's a plan on paper so that everybody's on the same page, can look into uh, that project for accountability, who's responsible for what, and then also so that other people can see who's responsible for what. And that way, everybody is clear on who's doing what at all times, so that then this plan, right, it can meet the needs of everybody internally and externally, so you're not missing anything is really the goal here, right? We didn't miss a feature because it wasn't assigned to the wrong team. We know the correct people working on the correct things, or we need to pull in some other people to work on stuff. And then also, you know, whatever other organizational stakeholders there might be. So basically trying to put together a plan and then um, stick to the plan and get everybody on board with it. Um, more best practices using component architecture. So this is using replaceable components, software objects that are intended to interact with other components. So not writing a bunch of custom code that only works one way. You wanna try to um, use defined interfaces and fu with functionalities and behaviors that uh, everybody's gonna be aware of that can be reused. This is simply a high level abstraction that you're dividing problems into sub problems. Uh, and the benefits from using component architecture here is that you're gonna get reduced development cost and you're gonna get increased reliability. Okay, next on my list, modeling software visually. So basically simplifying a view of a system it's the fastest way to put together complex relationships and then explain that to other people and also find any issues you might have. Um, this is essentially forming the foundation for implementation um, because it's a visual model, right? It's everybody can easily see how things connect. Uh, and these visual models, they should be really easy to create and consume. That's the goal of them. And if that is going on, uh, uh, if it's, easy to create and easy to consume, essentially then things are getting put together correctly and things get complicated, then they might not be getting put together correctly. Uh, other best practices, verifying quality. 
So you need to make sure that your system or components, whatever it is, meets the requirements uh, and expectations. So this is basically at all levels, everywhere from the implementation to the actual making of things, whatever that thing is. Um, and then also what we're making, is it actually solving whatever this problem is or whatever this feature is, is it actually solving whatever that story is? Uh, moving down my list, controlling change. So this is basically an organized and systematic approach to managing changes. So to easily explain this, you're trying to make sure that changes are documented and there's no unnecessary changes made so that everybody knows and can look back and, and see what those changes are, when things changed, uh, should we be making these types of changes? And so that everybody's on the same page. You could imagine a large team with a small component or a small bit of that team uh, or sub team making their own changes and not telling somebody else, well, if it's really important, uh, you can see a big disconnect here and, and getting down the road when this is there's expectations here and maybe these guys down here aren't fulfilling those expectations. You're going to cause delays and headaches and all sorts of problems. So essentially, if you have somebody that can manage, OK, hey, we're making this change down here. I'm going to let these guys know. And then these guys can tell us uh, their feedback. Oh, can you also do this? That won't work, whatever it might be. So you have to have a plan in place for kind of controlling and being aware of that change. And then lastly, some best practices and code simplicity. So the idea is to have good design and only write code that's needed. Don't need to have a bunch of bloated extra code. Uh, uh, do not repeat yourself really comes in here. Um, the you ain't gonna need it uh, concept captures this well. This basically means you're only writing the code that you need for the current problem. Don't try to solve future problems with your current code. Just write the code that's gonna solve what you're working on right now. Um, and then you want to have this code to be simple so that uh, it can easily be changed in the future. Um, a great test for this is how easily this code can be understood by others. If, it, if somebody else can come in and look at it and go, yeah, I understand what's going on here, then that's probably, probably a good thing. If they come in and they get lost and aren't sure or have a lot of questions on it, and then maybe it's not as simple as it should be. Um, Foundation of code simplicity, right, is to build things in the order of, of the most component first. So, right, you got your code, you got your classes, and you have your subsystems. And you want to just go, okay, well, what's the most important thing here? Start with that and then build around it. And then testing. Lastly, software best practices testing. Um, basically, you're testing throughout the entire development cycle making sure that there's a QA in practice and you have some sort of testing strategy, whatever that might be, like test driven development or whatever it might be. And then also you wanna to try to automate as much testing as you can, automate deployments as much as you can. That way um, you're getting rid of the human errors with this stuff and you're also speeding things up. Um, so you don't have to deal with a bunch of um, uh, developer or, or other related problems that might come along from people essentially, you know, making human errors and things and then slowing things down for whatever that reason might be. Maybe they're out sick uh, and things can't get tested now. Well, if it's automated, then you don't have to worry about that person necessarily being out sick or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, so that's the end of it. That is my entire quick intro to software engineering best practices. Again, if you have questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will definitely appreciate a subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.